So it's nearing completion, and I thought it would be helpful to share the working method. So it's um, basically 12 by 12, and it's made of glass tesserae, fairly small bits. So over 2,000 individual pieces, each one, uh, and it's a lot of aesthetic choices, you know, size, shape, color, direction, so thousands and thousands of decisions. I use a backer board. Uh, this hardy board is basically the same thing that a tile setter would use to put a backsplash in a, in a shower. And I mount it on a wood frame so that it's not flexible because I'm working with very small pieces and, a, and even a small amount of flex would, would be hard on, on the piece structurally. The way that I work is more um, representational and a little less graphic than, than a usual mosaic method. And because of that, I always use models whenever I'm working because that will give me the most accurate details. For this piece, that meant a trip to the butterfly garden and I took some photographs of the bees on the flowers in the butterfly garden. And fortunately, when they're busy working the flowers, they're not bothered or even interested in the photographer. So I take the photograph and then I work out the concept. And the second step, I do a color mapping where I do a quick watercolor study just to figure out what colors and where so I can start assembling my palette. And the third step is to take the finished idea, draw it out to scale, and then transfer it to the backer board. I use um, stained glass and in a single sheet of glass, front and back size, in this small tesserae, you can get lots and lots of different shades of color. All that came from a single piece of this glass. I also use some glass that's opaque, where it will be transmitted light, and some glass that's transparent so that the light will go through the glass and reflect back and it gives a little more depth. When I'm doing that, I like to use um, a, a, an, an epoxy. I use this bond stone epoxy rather than the weld bond glue because it's uh, very opaque and it can cover up some of my little pencil marks where I made different decisions as I, as I was working along. And the epoxy that I use, this particular Bondstone formula, gives me about 25 minutes of working time. And so I'll do a layout a little bit at a time. I will cut the individual pieces and I use a, a clear shelf paper has an adhesive side to it and I make all my decisions and any changes in, in decisions and get it all together for a small area and then I mix up the epoxy for that small area and transfer the pieces to the board. So in crafting this artwork I'm using both what we see and how we see. What we see, it would be the direction of the light in the artwork, the cast shadows, um, the transparency of shadows through, through the uh, transparent wings, and how we see. Uh, instead of blending the colors together like pigments in paint, our eyes blend this together with the light. It's, it's all light that some of it's reflected, some of it's refracted, 
and I use the principles of harmony and contrast of colors so that a, uh, a dark color next to something that's bright will look much darker than in the same color next to something that's more neutral. And vice versa, if, if, uh, if I want to take a light color and put it next to something dark, it'll look brighter than if it's um, on its own or by, uh, by another neutral color. I also use some um, surface uh, denotations. I, uh, for instance, I'll use um, some glass that's iridized. If I'm making a highlight, I can use an opaque white. I can use a transparent clear glass so the light goes down in and it has more depth. Or I can use a glass that has some iridized surface to it so that in the re reflected light it gets more active. The whole idea is to make each area a little more active than it would be if you just used a field of color. There are lots of techniques to do that. One, one of them is to add a very small amount of a complementary color and that will activate visually um, uh, an area. Or using the pattern of how the glass, glass tesserae are put together. Uh, I also will um, sometimes in a field of color add a shade that's slightly darker here and there or a shade that's slightly lighter here and there and it will give it uh, more visual information than if it's just a, uh, a, a solid field of color. So anyway, lots of, lots of information for you. Go out there and, uh, you, you know, tr try some things. Okay, so now we need to talk about the finishing touches. And one of the important things to consider is the grout. Grout can come in lots of different colors. Here I have the same background glass to make a field of color and three different grouts to show you how grout can dramatically affect the end product of, of the, the visuals for whatever it is you're trying, trying to convey in, in your mosaic. There are areas of a mosaic that may look better with one grout color instead of another. And in order to achieve that, we do something that's called zoning, where you would actually mask off an area, grout the area, let the grout set up and dry, and then mask it off and do the next area. That can be very tedious. It, it's very effective, um, but if you want to do lots of different grout colors, that becomes really very tedious. A way around that is to grout with a neutral grout like I have on the B. And over on this side, you can see where it isn't finished. I have a neutral co color that's just an off-white. And what I've done is I've colored the rest of the grout with uh, permanent or indelible inks. And this is done after the grout is dry and set up, but before you seal the grout it will be a little bit porous so that it will accept a lot of the pigment from the inks. Now, uh, indelible and permanent is kind of a relative term, especially with reds. They're very furtive. Uh, if you're going to put the mosaic where it's going to be getting um, direct light, sunlight, you would need to go ahead and grout the areas that you want to be red or the high chroma colors with the pigmented grout and not color it with the indelible inks. This one is almost finished and you can see how I've used several different colors and how it really brings the image together so that there isn't that um, 
graphic kind of separation and I prefer that for my work that is a little bit more articulate and a little bit less graphic than more traditional mosaic techniques. Anyway, I hope I've given you some really good information and go out and try things. Ha, ha, ha.